ವೀರಶೈವ ಸಮಾಜದ ಸದಸ್ಯರುಗಳಿಗೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಕಿರು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಸುಸ್ವಾಗತ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಏನಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ವಿ ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎ ಬೈಲಾಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅದರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸಂಕ್ಷಿಪ್ತವಾಗಿ ವಿವರಣೆ ಕೊಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಈಗ ಓಂ ಚಾಂಟಿ ಮತ್ತು ವಚನದಿಂದ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಓ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಬಸವಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಬಸವಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಬಸವಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶರಣ ಶರಣಾರ್ತಿ ಈಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಗುರು ಬಸನವರ ಒಂದು ವಚನ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಇಲ್ಲದ ಬಡವ ನಾನಯ್ಯ ಕಕ್ಕಯ್ಯನ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಬೇಡಿದೆ ಚೆನ್ನಯ್ಯನ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಬೇಡಿದೆ ದಾಸಯ್ಯನ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಬೇಡಿದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪುರಾತರು ನೆನೆದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಪುರಾತರು ನೆನೆದು ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭಿಕ್ಷವ ನಿಕ್ಕಿದಡೆ ಎನ್ನ ಪಾತ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಿತ್ತು ಕೂಡಲ ಸಂಗಮ ದೇವ ಗುರು ಬಸವಣ್ಣ ನೋಡಿ ಎಂತಹ ಮಹೋನ್ನತ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿತ್ವ ಬಸವಣ್ಣವ್ರದು ಅವರ ಭಕ್ತರಾದ ನಾವು ಅವರು ಹೇಳಿದ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಅಂಶಗಳನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಳವಡಿಸಿ ನಾವು ನಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ವಿ ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎ ಬೈಲಾಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೂನ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಲೂಪ್ ಹೋಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವಿ ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎ ಬೈಲಾಸ್ ಐ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆಸಿಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದ ನೋನ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಆನ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಐ ಡಿಡ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಅವರ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಫುಲ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಮೈಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಫೀಸರ್ಸ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪೋನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಅಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ಲಾಂಟಾ ಕನ್ವೆನ್ಷನ್ ದೇ ಆಸ್ ಟು ಮೀಟ್ ವಿ ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ ಆಫೀಸರ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಟೇಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಫ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕನ್ವಿನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಮೀ ದ ನೆಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಜನರಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಅಪ್ರೂವಲ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಪೋಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಮೀ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾರ್ ಆಸ್ ದಮ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಎ ನಿಯರ್ ಯುನಾನಿಮಸ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಬಿ ಆರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿ ಓ ಡಿ ದೇ ಸೆಂಟ್ ದೇ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ಯುನಾನಿಮಸ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಅವರ್ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ರೀಜೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗೇವ್ ಮೀ ಮೆಜಾರಿಟಿ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಐ ಆಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಐ ಟುಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಸಜೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಅಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ by the recommendations of nearly 80% of our board of directors with this kind of almost clearly majority approval i am bringing these amendments for your review and approval the intent of this program is to provide you some background information for you to be able to get the information educate yourself and give the right vote to ratify these amendments i will take you through some documents which is very important
I'm trying to share these uh, uh, documents with you. Okay. These are the VSNA past presidents who have given, reviewed, and some of them were the proposers, and some of them they have reviewed and approved. Look at here, past presidents, senior leaders, BOR and BOD members list, more than 50 have reviewed, discussed, modified, and formally approved the proposed VSNA bylaw 2024 amendments. List of past presidents, starting from all the living uh, past presidents, Sailaja Upin from 1995 to, you know, Lakshmi Hiremat, 2018, nearly 25 years of service rendered by these key leaders of our, uh, our nation, they have reviewed and they have approved. And let, us, let me go through their names one by one. Sailaja Upin, past president, North Carolina. Gadigappa Dodmani, past president, mega donor from Detroit. He is one of the proposers also. Prema Shankar, past president, Ohio. Then uh, Malik Kaju Nalwade, past president of, uh, from Chicago. Ravi Shankar Bhuplapur, past president, mega donor from New York. Prabhu Patil, our two-time president, mega donor and from Dallas. Nagabhushana Malakla, past president, Northern California. He is also one of the proposers. Somshekar Palegar, past president, founder of Florida chapter and BSUK from Florida. He is also one of the proposer. Vijay Kumar, past president from New York and New Jersey. Chennu Kambalya, past president, led the VSNA Baila changes in 2016, Chicago. Uh, Chennu Kambalya's support is very, very important. I will uh, share some, some more information about that uh, in a minute. Lakshmi Hiramat, a past president, past BOR chair from Northern California. These are the presidents who are reviewed and they have blessed these amendments. Along with them, some senior leaders, Guru Swami Aya, VSNA founder, first convention chair, past vice president of, and he's from Florida. He used to live in Virginia. Now he's living in Florida, 93 years. He is one of the key proposers of these amendments. Saraja Ullagaddi, VSNA founder, first convention co-chair, past VSNA officer from Virginia. Vijay Kotrappa, past BOR chair and significant donor. He is from uh, uh, Southern California. Uh, support of Vijay Kotrappa is very important. Uh, initially, he didn't like or you know, didn't agree with all the initial proposal given by our uh, uh, past presidents. And he had some very strong uh, recommendation, especially on the financial oversight. Uh, we had a, several discussions with him. Finally, this, these amendments uh, with the modifications brought, you know, we are brought in front of you has been kind of approved by Vijay Kotrapa also. Sajjan Shiva, past Bihar chamber, and he is one of the proposer of these amendments. Corona Hiramat, past VSNA treasurer, past chapter president from Southern California. Ranjan Raj, senior Jaja chapter leader. Ratna Ullagaddi, past Northern California chapter president and Northern California. And our board of regents, majority of them, they have also approved these amendments. Manjula Shankarappa, current BOR chair, past convention chair from Ohio. Prabhakar Putviraya, current BOR member, past convention co-chair, Toronto. Dhanan Tumkur, current BOR member, past convention chair, Detroit. Tej Karthal, current BOR member, past election committee chair, Detroit. Dr. Sudhir Kumar, current BOR member, Tennessee. Now, the board of directors. We have roughly 39 directors. We had a lot of information session. We had a BOD meeting and then, you know, we asked for their approval and recommendations. Nearly 80% of our board of directors have formally approved these uh, VSNA bylaws, 2024 amendments. Of course, they have given uh, some recommendations, good recommendations. Uh, we have tried to incorporate those recommendations in this final version of the uh, amendments, which has been brought to in front of you. I wanted to touch base on one very important email sent by our uh, uh, past president Chennu Kambalya, because Chennu Kambalya, the current uh, 
bylaws, what we are using, which is in force from January 1st, 2017, was uh, modified and you know uh, created, or I can say modified by Chinnu Kambalya. So it's very, very important. Later on, he was uh, a bylaw committee chair also. Hence, his approval and support of this particular, uh, uh, these amendments is, is very, very important. Along with that, you know, the Vijay Kotrapa's uh, uh, appro approval also. Let me take you through now the VSNA bylaws 2024 amendments A12, A18. The first one, the first uh, amendment is changing the structure of Board of Regents to the Board of Trustees. Uh, this document is available on our website and also I have sent, we will be sharing this with you in the emails so you can read this in detail. But I'll take you to the key points and the reasoning and the background of this particular change. See, uh, what is the, what is the a key change in the structure? BOT consists of four immediate past presidents who have administered the VSNA organization for a minimum of two years as its president. After completing the presidential term, then who have served two years as past president director in the next BOT. So VSNA general body will elect the remaining three BOT positions from the community who have demonstrated the dedicated commitment to the mission the goals and the objectives of VSNA, a life member in good standing for no less than five years and have served previously the VSNA as director or regent or a significant donor. It is very, very critical. Why? You, know, you can see why, why the uh, VSNA presidents, four presidents were including in this chapter. You know, a new VSNA president needs an advisory body having a, a specific knowledge of running this organization and who are having a hands-on experience in leading through all the challenges as president. I have been a chapter president for four years, but running a chapter and running a mega organization with different personalities, different leaderships, you know, and pulling you in different directions is very, very, very different. That's the reason we are convinced that we need to have the people who have this kind of specific knowledge. I want to show you uh, another uh, uh, attachment. Look at this. This is the Board of Regents. You can find this in our uh, website. It is an advisory body. So it is an advisory body or advisory board. It consists of seven members. And look at all these people. You know, you need to understand. I have a great respect for the leaders whom I am showing here. For example, Prabhakar Putviraya, he is around uh, octogenarian, uh, served our decade, our USNA for decades and very knowledgeable, worked in government, you know. Uh, and, you know, other people like Nain Taraswami, B.S. Sanjundappa, Dhanan Tumku, Dr. Sudhir Kumar, they're all great professionals, you know. And look down again here. Uh, again, Manjula Shankarappa, Prabhakar Putviraya, Vijay Kotrappa. Again, Vijay Kotrappa is a CEO of a company and he has managed a company. And again, you look at all these people down until here. Uh, they're all great professionals, you know, leaders, but they don't have a specific experience or knowledge of running this VSNA organization with this complexity. And also, I want to show you one pinpoint, one very interesting observation. Look at our uh, past president, uh, Lakshmi Hiramat. She has been in BOR for almost eight years, four years as a member and two times as a chair until 2016. After being eight years in BOR, then she became our VSNA past president. Look at another uh, strong leader of our VSNA who has been a convention chair, Jayashi Jagdish from Maryland. She has been, you know, two times in uh, BOR as a BOR member. Then she became secretary of VSNA organization. What I'm pointing it out is a new president, a new president requires a advisory body who have got the specific experience in running this organization. So currently, if you look at the, all the 10 years, you know, all the BOR members lack that kind of uh, specific experience. That is the reason we wanted to involve the four past presidents who have been elected by general body, not only elected by general body, 
you know, many people have served the as officer before that. Take the example of Chennu Kambalyar. He has he was a vice president for two years, a president for you know two years, then a past president for other two years. Six years he was served this one uh, VSNA or uh, Prabhu Patil again four years as a president and two years as a past president. So these kind of people with that kind of experience can really become an advisory group. And what is happening? Again, you, you, you can observe here. These past presidents have developed enormous contacts in the community. They know the community, all the leaders. They have the ability to raise the funds. And we are losing, the organization is losing them, you know, their service after they finish their past president uh, term. They all go to the oblivion. Some people remain active. Some people, you know, bless us from a distance. This is a loss for the organization. We need to involve them to help the organization to give the continuity and grow. And with that kind of maturity, we are all hoping they will be having less interference in the day-to-day -day running of the board of directors. Also, we are allowing three life members who have been five years life members and already worked in board as a director or a regent to contest and get elected from the general body. And in that way, you know, every two years, we'll have four people changing the BOT. One older uh, past president is going to retire from the BOT and a new past president who is completing his service in the board of directors as a past president director, he is going to enter the BOT. Remember, he has been elected already by general body. So three new people will be elected by general body. So four people will change every two years. That's the reason structure we have done. And I'm going to the powers and responsibilities. We had a lot of uh, uh, suggestions, comments, you know, uh, about this power and resp responsibilities. Initially, the past presidents who were proposers, they kind of eliminated, they wanted to reduce the, uh, you know, powers and responsibilities of uh, BOT and want to make it a purely advisory body. But many leaders like Vijay Kotrappa, Somshakar Palaygar, you know, many people, they felt, you know, we need to have the strong financial oversight for the success of this uh, organization. So we looked at the, these three, three particular uh, points I want to take through. Other things you can read through, they're pretty much same between the both structure. The one in the powers, approval of reimbursement of expenses incurred to the corporation by directors, officers, or regents. You know, even though it is there in the BOR as a, as a power, I don't remember any time in my last three and a half years as a first servant that we went for approval of the BOR for any expenses which is less than $1,000. And I asked many presidents, they also said they never went to the BOR for any approval. So basically, it is a redundant uh, uh, you know, a power which is never used. So instead of that, we wanted to make it a, a really you know, a uh, kind of a change which is going to help the organization and really have a financial oversight. So BOD normally approves up to anything above 100, sorry, any, anything above $1,000 he approved by the BOD. So officers need to get the approval of the BOD. But anything more than 10,000, they need to get the approval of BOD and also from BOD. That's a requirement in this change. Also, any contract, any legal or procurement contract, which is open-ended, without any not to exceed amount, need to get approval from BOD and also from BOD. So in that way, they'll have a clear oversight, but you know they will not try to interfere in a small every day-to-day -day affair. So only after ten thousand, you know, the officers or BOD has to approach for the approval of the BOD. Second uh, highlighted point is in the event of disapproval of the amendments of the bylaws by BOR, the BOD shall still have the right to present these bylaws to the general body. It's very interesting in twenty twenty two. That time, the BOR didn't approve these uh, changes. As the first servant, I could have easily used this clause in the bylaw and would have, I'd have taken all these amendments to uh, in 2022 for general body approval. But 
since i wanted a clear majority almost near unanimous appro you know approval you know myself and my officers we postponed it so we are changing this bylaws this time i got the approval of bior got the approval of bod and more than 50 people have reviewed and you know approved this one so how we are changing in the event of disapproval of the amendments of the bylaws by bot the vsna officers or bod doesn't have the right to present the bylaws to the general body voting so any future amendments need to be approved by bod and also bot that is the change we are making then you look at the responsibility reviewing the financial reports of the corporation reviewing the financial report it becomes like a review from any life member it doesn't add much value or you know kind of a oversight so kind of we changed especially look at these situations right now this year we don't have the convention so literally we will not have a general body members you know assembling in a particular room and asking all these questions so with all the discussion and recommendation from people like vijay kotrappa and others you know we included this one vsna treasurer need to present the annual financial report to the bot and get it approved before presenting it to the general body in that way we have the knowledgeable people in the bot who have run this organization who have presented this financial report several times so they can review this one and they can look at the look at the validity and approve once they approve then the general body you know automatically can review and approve this one so these are the changes we have made to improve the financial you know oversight so if you all agree with this one and vote and ratify so this is going to change as an amendment uh, in the bylaw and we have a lot of references of bor uh, you know in the uh, in our current uh, bylaws so all the bor references will be changed to the board of trustees uh, to reflect the intent of this amendment and also the transition from the current bor we have now three to four elected uh, bor who have not completed the terms so that transition from current to bor to bot we need to decide after the if this uh, uh, amendment you know gets uh, ratified okay i move to the next one amendment number 2 it is fairly straight forward you know uh, usually we had a difficulty when somebody is deceased you know his spouse should become a life member uh, we need to kind of transfer that responsibility to them uh, it does not happening because we don't have a way in the current uh, uh, bylaw to do that one uh, it because it says corporation membership shall neither be transferred nor assigned to another individual so to clarify this one we passed a resolution in 2021 the board approved but the general body need to approve to change the bylaw so we are uh, including here uh, in case of death of a bona fide member whose name is listed on vsna life member roster it will be transferred only to his or her spouse that is the only change state forward afterwards election committee this is very interesting in the election committee voting election committee is always formed to elect all the officers and uh, elected uh, board of directors and uh, board of regents in 2020 we had a major overhaul of the vsna bylaws which many people didn't like and you know we started questioning uh, that time the president why independent election committee was not appointed for the general body voting of the bylaws the reason the reasoning we got was very interesting they said election committee is required only to elect the officers and bod or bor members not for bylaw voting then we looked into the you know bylaws in detail it be, it kind of falls in the gray area there is no clarity so we wanted to avoid that uh, gray area so we are telling here provisions of this section are applicable to all general body voting including the bylaws voting also so any general body voting you have to form a independent election committee the way we have formed the independent election committee once i got it passed through this uh, bod my responsibility was over i have given all these things to the independent election committee they are going to run this uh, you know uh, voting 
from the life members and 2024 annual members. So this is the amendment number three, which is quite straightforward. Uh, amendment number four, you know, is very interesting, appears to be very a simple clause in the uh, uh, bylaws. Here it tells, shall be a life member, anybody who contests in the election, shall be a life member of the corporation in good standing for no less than one year. This in, nine, in 2018, this caused a major, major challenge and, you know, the whole BOD, BR, everyone spent nearly eight months and changed the election committee three times. Major mess. I'll give you the brief about that. Uh, 2018, there were three candidates. One was from Chicago, another was from Detroit, another one from Florida. The Detroit candidate was a previous year convention chair, successfully ran a convention chair. And he had paid, I think, 50% of his life membership 20 years back. And the remaining 50 he paid in you know, a previous year. Then it started, claim started that he has not completed one year life member as per the bylaw. So the Chicago candidate and Florida candidates started pushing for to disqualify the Detroit candidate. The first election committee didn't agree. So what they did, they dismissed the election committee. Then all this went on for almost eight months, I was a simple chapter president and was watching this drama and I was really upset. Nobody is understanding the intent of this particular bylaw. This bylaw is telling the person who is going to stand for presidential position, he should have a, a real interest, real interest to protect the mission and goals of this VSNA. That is the intent of this one. This guy who, are, who we are trying to disqualify, he was already a convention chair, ran a convention of around 130,000 dollars, that means he's already proved his intent. But remember, eight months, you know, we fought for this. Finally, he has to take legal help to reinstate his candidacy. You know, hence, we are making it very clear now, anybody who wants to contest in this year election, he must be a life member by January, 3rd, January 1st and 2023. So we can avoid that kind of hassles in future in VSNA. So it is straightforward. Now, amendment number five. This is, we are not changing anything. We are just adding to the current section of uh, VARC, Virasheva Inter International Resource Center. This is a very important one. You know, the current officers and myself were indebted to VARC committee, especially to the VARC committee chair, Dr. Sajjan Shiva. Not only he helped us to run all these programs we are doing, he has guided at every step and you know, he advised me and he and his volunteer group, without them, myself and our officers would have never been able to run so many programs like Vichara Vedike, International Basu Jayanti, Children Talent Festival. You know, it's all very hard, very hard to do as a just by the officers because they are more into the running the BOD and you know regular administrative work, you know, and the treasurer will be busy in the finances, you know. It's very, very hard to get time for doing this kind of inspirational. Uh, you know, the programs. So the VARC and their group, you know, really helped me to run this one. I want this to be a kind of a, uh, you know, help to the future presidents also. So we kind of advised, you know, even senior presidents were advised us to make it as a part of uh, VARC. Of course, they were doing all this with the approval of the BOD and the officers and only give providing the voluntary help and the people who are passionate in uh, doing this kind of work, you know, they can all join together in this committee and make a, make this kind of, you know, programs to run for, uh, you know, perpetuity, provide the continuity required. That is the intent of this uh, amendment. Amendment number six, mega donations. This uh, particular uh, uh, amendment we're adding to the bylaw. Gadiyappa uh, Dudmani in 2021, he expressed his interest to donate around hundred thousand dollars to VSNA to me, but he have wanted to have some stipulations. So we started working with him in all the stipulations, you know, and gift agreement. We created a gift agreement, and in that he had one stipulation that every year five percent of his uh, uh, donation should be uh, given to the winners of the VSNA Children Talent Festival, you know, competitions. That was a stipulation. And this stipulation need to be changed 
only by an approval of general body. You know, it is a hard earned money. He has uh, worked very hard to make this saving and he was giving with a big heart this kind of donation to the VSNA. Knowing the bylaw very well, knowing the loopholes of the bylaw very well, he wanted general body to approve this, any changes in the future. Because I'll, I'll give you a hypothetical situation. It will never happen because people who come to serve these positions are really passionate about VSNA and this is a religious organization. They will not do any such things, but there are chances. A president who is having a support like me, in this uh, uh, VSNA amendments, I got 80% of support. So if I want to change this uh, stipulation, and if I'm able to get you know the majority vote, I can change this stipulation to anything what we want from the BOD. That's the reason he wanted to get it approved by the general body. So we have included this. Because getting approval from uh, general body is not that easy. Look at the amount of effort it is taking, amount of process it is taking. I had to convince more than 50 people even to get these amendments in front of you. Okay, that's the reason. The last one is our dream project, which has been a dream of many of us, you know, and uh, uh, we are kind of uh, working on developing a centralized website where under the website, 29 chapters will have the same subdomains. We'll all be working together. Finally, that unity, the unity of all our VSNA chapters along with the one organization is going to happen. We almost completed 70%. You know, one of our vendor from Bangalore is working on this. And once we develop this one, we are roughly having a budget of around 15,000. Once you finish this one, then most important, easy is to develop and you know start this website. But most difficult is, is, is to maintain this for year after year. I'm telling you it is very difficult because from three and a half years, I'm managing the Central VSNA website. It's very hard, it takes time. So we are requesting all the chapters along with the four, four officers they elect, elect a fifth officer, call him as a digital director with a good technical background, sufficient technical background of knowing the WordPress and you know able to play with the, uh, our website. So with this digital director, imagine we have got 29 chapters. If you get 29 people or even 20 people, we can form a VSNA digital management group. A kind of a build a gang of volunteers who can year after year, they will maintain and manage this website. So we can make this one as a self-running machine without any need to spend additional money. Because we can't afford to spend thousands of dollars every year. That's the reason you know we are trying to put this uh, into the bylaws because we, even if you tell the chapters, you know, please, even to get the one rep representative to our web development group, I have been working from last two months. Still, some of the chapters, you know, they have not sent their representative. So it's very hard just doing it in a in a voluntary way, in motivating way. So we need to have this in the bylaws so that you know each chapter should comply with this. That's very important. Another one is you know very important. All the chapter presidents, officers must be preferably VSNA life members or at the minimum VSNA annual members for the year they are serving as VSNA appointed directors. See, it's very, very important. And becoming an annual member is, you know, right now it is only $25. For two years, if your term is there, $25 and $25, $50, you know. It's very important because some of the board of directors who have voted, who have approved these amendments, they cannot vote in the general body because they are neither life members nor annual members. This is a kind of a paradox what we have in our current situation. So with this clause, you know, all the chapter presidents and the chapter officers, at the minimum, they have to become annual members. In that way, they can vote in the general body also. They can vote in the board of directors as the appointed director, and also they can vote in the general body. That's the intent of this change. Now, uh, we'll move on to the amendment number eight. I'll take a few minutes about this particular amendment. It is very, very important. You know, when I became your first servant in 2021, many seniors among them, the one who really, you know, uh, managed this one, who kind of created this, uh, our current logo, the black and white logo, what we have, they all suggested, you know, uh, we have moved into the digital, uh, uh, digital times and we need to, uh, you know, 
look at upgrading our uh, uh, VSNA emblem also. So we hired a, a graphic artist from uh, Karnataka and we started uh, developing this uh, emblem. And from my last three and a half years experience, and also I became a life member nearly 20 years uh, back. So I had observed there are few sections of our people who are very passionate about our emblem and they don't want anything to be changed. So basically we went exactly reflecting whatever it is there in our uh, uh, current emblem, like including the words, the uh, Vishwamanava Dharma, the Lingayatism, a number of stars also, and the number of rings also. We tried to do the same, uh, the sun rays, what is indicated, but we have tried it was not looking good. Then the graphic artist himself is suggested, so I will do something, take a look at it. Then he put this Rudraksha circle, then it looked very nice with a good contrast. Then, you know, I showed it to the person who developed this, you know, our senior, the previous logo, and they also liked, many people liked it. So we thought, you know, of proposing this one. We tried to propose this in uh, 2022, but, you know, because we didn't get the majority, we postponed. And again, we are bringing it, you know, in front of you. The next one, the next logo is exactly the same logo. Only the, our Rishlinga Puja hand has slightly brought down to put an image of Baswa in the background. See, uh, it's very interesting in my observations, you know, uh, when, when our organization was formed nearly 50 years back, Definitely, there was no differentiation between a Virashaiva and, uh, you know, Lingayat, uh, uh, you know, sects, or you can say thought process. That's why you see the Virashaiva Samaja in the top and Lingayat in the bottom. Both are exactly same. And you know, it's interchangeable name. But in the recent years, there are some uh, different definitions have been given by a few people. And also a new kind of wave has started as a Basava Dharma, Basava philosophy, you know, they are kind of, you know, kind of different, this kind of approach has started. Our community is very, very small and our beliefs are very divergent. It's very, very divergent from many, many, you know, centuries, I can say. I'll give my personal example. In my own life, you know, what I have witnessed. My father was born in uh, Kudla Sangama and he is from the Sharana land. And my mother is from Bangalore and she is from the south side. And while growing up, I had seen their discussions. Their belief systems were completely opposite, North Pole and South Pole in so many ways. So we have seen this discussion of these two different uh, thought process, you know, from our childhood. And I have observed this is different from district to district. What is the goal of VSNA? Goal of VSNA is not to kind of, you know, uh, identify these differences. Our goal is to unify all of us get the commonality of all and make it you know common to everyone vsna welcomes you know virashevas or lingais in our mind you know it is both are same also baso philosophy followers baso dharma followers sharana dharma followers they are all ours this is our unified vision that is exactly as per the vsna mission goals and objectives so here we kind of you know try to unify that kind of a vision and again, it all depends on all of you. You may keep the old one, or if you decide to select the new one, then you know go ahead and select you know which one you like. And according to the majority, the election committee will give us the recommendation. So this is the last amendment. And again, I'm telling you, this is we are just trying to reflect the, our community. 40 years back, we were a one type, one different. Uh, community after 50 years in northern america we have become a slightly different community we are reflecting that but choice is yours it's an option given to you okay now i will take you through the vsna baila voting ballot you have now reviewed all the amendments you saw their provisions and the reasoning it is time to cast your out please remember the last date for receipt of ballots to the given address is July 26, 2024. So make sure to vote one week before. In the voting ballot, we have got three groups. Group number one. You know, here you have to vote uh, for all the amendments from one to seven. After reviewing everything, you are uh, willing to 
vote for all the amendments from one to seven. So you put yes in the yes column. Okay. The second group is for voting amendment number eight. And the amendment number number eight, that is choosing the new logos, if it is yes, indicate yes in the yes column, then you have a choice to choose two logos, logo one or logo two. So indicate S or you know, into mark or X mark in the yes column. By doing this, you are completing the voting. There is nothing to do after this, but you have to go to the group three if you want to individually vote for each of the amendment. If you decide so, then for amendment one, S, you can put in S column. Amendment two, yes, in the S column. Amendment three, yes or no. Amendment four, yes or no. Amendment five, yes or no. It continues like that. With that, you'll be completing the ballot. Here we have given a brief description of the amendments which we have reviewed, just for you to know exactly for which amendment you are voting. And below we have provided some links and the website. Uh, on the vsna.org you know, homepage, you have the logo details and also this information session video and the PDF containing all the details. Or you go to the YouTube channel, VSNA Art Chapters, and look for the video, VSNA Bylaws 2024 Amendments Information Session for General Body Approval. Then you will find all the details and explanation. Now I'll take you to the uh, VSNA.org website. In this website, go to the home page. You will see the two logos, proposed logos of uh, you know amendment number eight, the logo number one, which is exactly like our uh, current logo with the 3D coloring, and the logo number two. Below that, you'll find a video of this information session. Then below, you will find the details of the PDF providing the current bylaw provisions and proposed amendment provisions and the reasoning behind it. With this, I am completing our information session. And as you know, we have gone through the details of all the amendments and the 50, more than 50 VSNA leaders who have approved these amendments. And I am sure that you know all of you will support these amendments wholeheartedly and ratify them. Sharanu Sharan Artiglo. In Yenadur Nimige, if you have any questions or clarification, please do not hesitate to contact me. You can reach me at harish.vsnapresident at gmail.com or 832-607-3843. 832-607-3843. You're always welcome to call me for any further clarifications. Once again, Sharana Sharanarthi.